I'm with him. Just, just as a side note. <laughs> that's true. That's true. See, our mind got to be on Jesus, not on the money. Amen. If you let money motivate you, you'll start doing some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Stuff outside of Jesus. All right, now let's look at Luke again. Luke 12. And 35. So, let your loin be girded about. Let your lights and, and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Mm. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to me and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. Hey, Paris, are you hearing this word? Sit down next to mine. Sit down next to mine. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. In other words, if you own the house and the thief left you a note saying, hey, tonight, you know, after midnight, 3 a.m. exactly, I'm going to be there to rob your house. <laughs> if you knew Jesus said, you would have watched. And you wouldn't allow that guy to get through. You would have been like the people in that in that show, you know, those um, that boy in Home Alone setting all type of traps for that <laughs> for that robber. <laughs> he said, "Be ye therefore ready also." Mm -hmm. He said, "For the Son of Man comes in an hour that you think not." So, in other words, you got to be ready for Jesus at all times. Out of all the Christians that were ever born again, you know, people that have been born again, not many are going to be alive and remain until that moment when the Lord comes in the rapture. Amen. We may be. But many have gone before us. But those people that have gone before us also had to be ready at any time for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, we know he's coming in the clouds. <clears throat> but we're talking about not only that, but what about his personal coming to you. Mm, amen. That's right. What about when he wants to visit you and dine with you alone? Mm. Or churches that will let Jesus in to feast with him. You know, whole churches could dine with Jesus. Mm. So, he's not limited just to come in that moment in the twinkling of an eye when the rapture is going to happen. That's going to be a a huge occurrence when the dead in Christ, all the bodies of the saints are going to rise to meet their spirits in the air. They're going to be joined together. Then we're going to be transformed instantly. We're going to become immortal. We're going to be caught up. Glory to God. God gave me a dream of it. And I saw people, it didn't happen all at once, but I saw people, it's like the way he showed me they, their whole being turned into it looked like stars like people turn into like stars of light and just begin to shoot up wow. they were just shooting up you know not all at once but it was like it, had, it looked like it was going to take a while because one would shoot up there another shoot up there then another shoot up over there it was amazing so Let's look at something interesting in Luke 2. I mean, not Luke, but Revelation 2. In 2. Jesus said, I know thy works and thy labor. I like how he 
he said, I know your works and your labor. <laughs> and, your Amen. and your patience. See, Jesus knows everything about us. He knows the details of everything. Ain't nothing going by without Jesus knowing. Ain't nothing going by in our lives. Ain't nothing going by uh, getting by in the churches. See, now, he wrote this to the church. Paris, Paris, he wrote this to the church, Paris. You want to hear that? <laughs> All right. Sometimes it works if I call her name. She'd be like, yes, okay. <laughs> so Jesus said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. And how thou canst not bear, you cannot bear them which are evil. And as and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. He said, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake you have labored and have not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Now Jesus said, you guys are doing good, you labored, you worked, you got patience. You even didn't just believe any person that came along saying they're an apostle, but you tried them. And you found that, that many of them were lying. So you did pretty good with that, Jesus said. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because you have left your first love. See, they were strong in works. They were very strong in works. <clears throat> But they left their first love. Their first love is that intimate relationship with Jesus. Their first love is that willingness to meet with Jesus, to, to dine with him. What's, the, what's one of the first things you do with someone you like of the opposite sex? Before you get married and hopefully after you get married. You want to have a good time with that person. You say, hey, can I take you out to eat? See what I'm saying? You take them out to eat. They're sitting across from you. You got time to talk with them, find out more about them. Now, if you're married, that's also good. Because sometimes people can get so busy. You need that time where you just take someone out to eat. And what are you doing? You're rekindling that love between you and, and that wife or if you're a woman, that husband. And you're going to go in the route that the world wants to go. Two husbands or two wives together, you know. That <laughs> don't make no sense. It makes no sense. Someone said, that don't make no sense. <laughs> that don't make no sense. It doesn't make no sense. Two husbands and two wives. Like, you know, a, a man and a man or a wife and a wife. But if you got, you know, someone of the opposite sex of God made, you could rekindle that love. You see, that's your first love. Remember Jesus talking about, I will come. If you hear my voice, we're going to have dinner together. We're going to dine together. Because he loves us. He wants our first love to be burning good, burning bright. Jesus loves each one of us. He does. If you're a man or woman, see, it doesn't matter.